Hey, your simile point to this topic is a spontaneous bacterial peritonitis. Uh, important topic for uh, your simile step to see one, two, and a three. Uh, before starting this topic, I would like to uh, say you that uh, please do subscribe to my channel for more videos. Okay, let me start with this spontaneous bacterial peritonitis. Definition: It's an acute bacterial infection of ascitic fluid, right? So I will not go in detail. Rather, three fourth of the spontaneous bacterial peritonitis infection have been caused by aerobic gram-negative organisms. At risk? Who are at risk? Who presents with these symptoms? Is a cirrhosis patient, a liver failure, like a hepatitis C, chronic hepatitis C infection? Or um, some infection like HIV patients with a liver failure and all those things and the alcoholic cirrhosis, the many causes, right? Cirrhosis. So they can present with a, suddenly with a fever and chills to the ER. Low complement levels and patients with ascites. Clinical features, how they present, that's very important. Uh, fever and chills, abdominal pain, or a discomfort. Remember, fever, chills with abdominal pain. First, think of SBP, spontaneous bacterial peritonitis. Okay. In your simile, they give like this: worsening or unexplained encephalopathy, diarrhea, ascites that does not improve following the administration of diuretic medications, worsening or a new onset renal failure, ileus. So, these are no much so, not so much important compared to the above first two: fever, chills, and abdominal pain. Remember this. Sorry. Okay. Mm, peritoneal, 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 sorry, uh, peritoneal fluid analysis while in the emergency department. This is very important step you need to do because these patients does not come to your office, rather they come to the ER emergency room. Why? Because they have fever, chills, and the abdominal pain. That is a severe abdominal pain, right? So you need to start with the test and the treatment. That's very important. So how do you proceed? Diagnostic paras paracentesis should be performed in all patients who do not have an indwelling peritoneal catheter and are suspected of having spontaneous bacterial peritonitis. Fever, chills, abdominal pain, first think of bacterial peritonitis, spontaneous. Best predictor of SBP is what is ascitic fluid neutrophil count more than 500 cells per microliter is the single best predictor of spontaneous bacterial peritonitis. Sometimes they ask you which of the following is the best predictor of SBP. It's going to be the ANC. Okay, PMN count is that is a polymorphon neutrophils uh, count is 250 cells or higher in conjunction conjunction with the positive bacterial culture results. So what happens? There are some definitions like probable spontaneous bacterial peritonitis, in which the cytic fluid cultures, like we sent for a cultures, are negative. Cytic fluid cultures are negative, but the PMN count is 250 or higher. So the diagnosis is probable spontaneous bacterial peritonitis, but they do not much differ in the treatment. Okay. So recent investigation, remember about this point, may be asked sometimes in USMLE. Reagent strips that detect leukocyte esterase, which can be read at the bedside using probable spectrophotometric devices. Okay. Okay, if the ascites is very minimal, so it can be detected by ultrasonography. Blood and urine, urine culture, you, you should have to send. Because... Um, and the most important thing is uh, if blood and you should not wait for a blood and urine culture reports because it will take nearly 48 to 72 hours right so in meantime you should start with empirical treatment I will tell you later which are the antibiotics which can be used for this but remember blood and urine culture you should send so which of the following uh, which is the best initial first initial is the peritoneal analysis then blood and urine cultures Rest CBC, BMP you will send. Management. How do you manage? If PMN is more than 500, then you should admit and treat for a spontaneous bacterial peritonitis. 
regardless of peritoneal fluid gram stain results so nothing to worry if the pmn count is more than 500 just go ahead with the treatment go ahead with the treatment with the antibiotics fluids right so which are the antibiotics i will tell you later if the pmn count is below 250 how do you manage very important if the pmn count is below 250 how do you manage all symptomatic patients should be admitted so if they present with a fever chills and abdominal pain and the pmn count is 200 or less than 250 you should admit them okay let's start with this then uh, select subset of patients who are completely asymptomatic yet have positive cultures may be managed without treatment and must undergo a follow-up pass uh, paracentesis within 24 hours so this is what exactly you need to remember okay let's move on to the next slide symptomatic patients with peritoneal fluid pmn count of 250 or 250 to 500 should be admitted and treated for bacteria spontaneous bacterial peritonitis so what which are the antibiotics we can use is the ampicillin and aminoglycoside combination this is a traditional so most commonly this one is used ampicillin with the uh, aminoglycoside combination cefotaxime does not cover enterococci so it is not used recently third generation cephalosporins are used okay prognosis the mortality rate in the patients with a sbp ranges from 40 to 70 percent in adults patients with cirrhosis so it's a high high mortality so you need to treat it with the antibiotics don't wait for uh, blood cultures and uh, urine culture reports so you need to straight away go ahead with the treatment that's very important okay i'm done with this thank you so much